Hello, I'm Toby Johnson, pastor of Gray Road Baptist Church, and I'd like to take less than five minutes to help you think biblically about a question related to the current COVID-19 crisis. This week's question, how should Christians think about our government restricting our right to peaceably assemble as a church? You know, gathering together in person Sunday by Sunday to worship the Lord is a central spiritual discipline for us as Christians. It's vital. And right now in Indiana, we're living under an executive order from our governor to stay at home, meaning we can't gather as a congregation. At the same time, the First Amendment protects our right to exercise our religion, our right to peaceably assemble and gather. So what are we to think when our government sets aside our religious liberty like this? Well, let me begin with a couple of clarifications. First, what we're experiencing is a limitation of religious liberty, not an elimination of it. There are many places in the world where it is illegal to be a Christian, where that liberty is eliminated altogether. We're not experiencing that. Secondly, what we're experiencing is a temporary limitation of religious liberty and not a permanent one. We don't have a timeline, but we trust that as things return to normal, we will be able to exercise our religious liberty again and start gathering week by week. So the question is, how should we think about the government temporarily limiting our religious liberty? To answer that question, we must begin with a biblical understanding of human government. The Bible teaches us that all human authority is ordained and given by God, whether it's in the home, in the church, or in the state. Romans 13.1 says there is no authority except from God. And those in authority have been entrusted with that authority not to serve themselves, but to serve those under their authority. Romans 13, 4 says the one in a position of civil authority is God's servant for your good. So that is generally the purpose of human government, is the good of its citizens. And the chief good which government provides is protection. 1 Peter 2, 14 tells us that the governmental leader's job is to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. And when this happens then citizens can live quiet and peaceful lives, 1 Timothy 2, 2. So the government is meant to protect us from threats to that peaceful life, threats from outside the nation through our military, and threats from inside of our nation by the establishment and upholding of laws. In our current situation, this temporary limitation of our religious liberty is part of a larger set of restrictions where no groups of any kind can assemble. And it's all aimed to stop the spread of COVID-19, to protect as many citizens as possible, not from a human threat, but from a viral one. We should be thankful that our government wants to protect its citizens, even as we remain aware that these are human leaders. They're fallible, doing the best they can with the information they have. So while we don't like the idea of not gathering, of our religious liberty being suspended like this, we submit to the governing authorities in this executive order. But think about this. As Christians, we hold to a biblical worldview, biblical morality. We swim against the ideological and moral current of our society. And because of that, in the future, we could face the kind of opposition and oppression that other Christians face around the world. If that day comes and our government wants to keep us from gathering, keep us from preaching, keep us from practicing our Christian faith, because it is the Christian faith, then we'd be in a different situation altogether. We'd respectfully refuse to submit. We'd say with the apostles in Acts 5, we must obey God rather than men. And we have no reason to think that's what we're experiencing now, but we shouldn't be so naive as to think it can't happen. Until that day comes, let's be thankful for the liberty we have and mindful to pray for those who don't have it. Thanks for watching this Fireside Chat. If you'd like more information about Gray Road Baptist Church, just go to grayroad.com. I'd like to invite you to join us this Sunday for our virtual live stream service at 1030. You can find it on YouTube, on Facebook, and on the front page of our website. Until next week, stay steady.